Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson. Today on our My Five series, we have Barbara Peacock, who has recently released her book, American Bedroom. Barbara, it is great to have you on The Crit House. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, today we are going to look at Barbara's five images, and they come from Henri Cartier-Bresson, Helen Levitt, Larry Fink, Sally Mann, and Eugene Richards. Barbara, so you are uh, just in the process of releasing your book, American Bedroom, and it really is getting some um, some impressive response, but it is a it is a very impressive piece of work that you've been working on for seven, it's a seven year project. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Seven years. So here's the book for all of you. American Bedroom. There you go. Ta -da. Um, yeah. So <laughs> seven years, I had this idea that I would like to photograph people in their bedrooms as sort of a anthropological study of human nature and showing the people in their surroundings and what, they had to say about their life at that time and showing um, all the little details of, of a life lived in, in that room or outside in the case of home houseless people. You know, I thought I would do it faster than COVID. So it, it, it did it took me seven years to get to every state, all 50 states of the country, uh, photographing people in their bedrooms. Well, so that's, <laughs> uh, that's, that is just, it's just an amazing project. And I mean, it's not just the photography, but you have quotes or statements from all of the subjects, which are all so telling and poignant. I mean, the images are telling and poignant, but then you're also there in, in you, you had to, you had to curate images, but then curate and edit the statements as well. That must've been just a fascinating process that is so true and thank you for saying that because i think you know just a little ways into the project um i realized a, a gentleman that i was photographing papere the older gentleman he's sitting on his bed with his rosary and he has the cross and then the uh, religious figurines on his yes. uh, drop and uh then he made us crepes you know i always try to have you know like some kind of time with the with the subject, like whether it's coffee after or we sit on the porch or it could be before, or after, whatever. And so he said while we were eating that his, he said this exactly. He said, every morning I try to get up, I try to be quiet so I don't wake her. And then I remember she's no longer here and a light bulb went off. And I was like, that just changed the whole project in my mind. Yeah. It yeah. just sealed the deal. And I'm like, okay, so now I, yes, it's a photographic project, but these statements are as important, if not in my mind, more important than the yeah. photograph. Because so uh, now we're going to move on to the hard part. Uh, so okay. we we asked you we, we asked you to look at the, to pick five images from all of artistic history uh, that have influenced you, so that we could talk about those things. Um, and I happen to know that was a bit of a challenge for you, or hard, oh. or <laughs> so. Tell us what you went through and and what how you ended up deciding on the five images. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little hard. So um, I know I, I, people might have heard uh, interviews with me before or not, but my dad was like, no, we don't need to have TV. That's not important. So we weren't really seeing much of the outside world because we were in this little small town. And I don't even think he got the newspaper. I think he got it at work. So we weren't only thing we saw was really National Geographic. Like that was our outside view to the world and these art books. I was, you know, as I said before, I was really taken in by the potato eaters by Van Gogh and 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 Millet. Though they were my favorite artists because of the genre of 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 painting everyday people, which ended up like really being my thing. So how did I come up with my top five? Uh, Cartier Bresson had a show at the museum, and so Bresson opened the world to me because the whole concept of the decisive moment has been just part of my brain since I just found out about Brasson. You know, it's just the decisive moment in life, the decisive moment that you could capture and also never shoot the parade. So that's what Brasson was, never shoot the parade, like go to the parade, but don't shoot the parade, shoot right. the periphery, Turn shoot around. the people watching, shoot all this. So yeah, so it's really hard to pick because I love so many of them. But I chose this photograph because these children playing by the Berlin Wall. I mean, so children, as you mentioned earlier when we were chatting, has been uh, my calling to photograph children my whole uh, career. 
And it just was so perfect to have learned so much from Brasson and on the streets and the decisive moment. But also with Brasson, it was all about composition, geometry, and like just the perfection of the moment. Like for instance, all of these images that we're gonna look at, if you were an artist, uh, if you were a painter, you couldn't paint this any better. Mm -hmm. And that's how I decided to, ch that's how I chose the images that I chose to, because to me, there's such an aspiration to try to get to that point in my work or in, well, I, I assume a lot of people who shoot on the streets or create any type of work, you're always trying to attain that. So, and I don't like to use the word perfection because I don't consider myself a perfectionist, but we are trying to attain um, this, this certain level in our work. And then Helen Levitt with your second image. Yeah, so Helen Levitt was a goddess to me. <laughs> so there were not a lot of women, not a lot of women um, doing uh, street work or photography in general. Um, and so I saw her soon after I had seen, you know, I'm in art school. So we're looking at everybody, yeah. you know, looking at, you know, all the, all the photographers, all the great photographers. Um, but she just stood out to me on, and her work is fun and whimsical and also beautifully composed. And she photographed children a, you know, a good portion of her work were, were children and that really appealed to me. And so that was sort of the beginning of what I was thinking about when I was on the streets to photograph. These two artists were very, very much in the, in, in, in my mind. Mm. And I was strongly influenced by both of them. She's amazing. Oh gosh. Yeah. Number and three, then, the man who calls you Peacock, as I understand. Yes, yes, I know. Thank you for calling me Peacock. Um, <laughs> so, um, this image here, I saw in a museum. It wasn't at the, uh, it wasn't in Boston. I, I believe it was at the Cordova. And I was just at an art show looking at work and I turned a corner and I saw this and literally, I mean, like, I think, uh, you know, it took my breath away. To me, this is everything a photograph can be. For me, personally, yeah. it's just story, composition, and moment yep. perfected. I mean, everything. If you gesture were and light, about everything's gesture, there. Gesture and light, yes, yes. Line, expression, we're talking expression. <laughs> like... <clears throat> And a powerful so, moment on a kid's birthday, right? You know, a powerful moment and like art. You know, this is this is high art, and you can't photograph something like this if you're not embedded and have this poetic ability and vision and a certain connection to people and in you know like embrace the 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 moment decisive moment and yeah so for me this was just like taking everything that I had been learning and then I saw this and it it was such a beautiful intimacy yeah it, and that that's what I wanted also so now where I was on the streets 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 and now we're in someone's home and yeah. we're bringing everything, all of that, that we've learned. And people have a really hard time about this with street photography. And it's like, you call it what you want to call it. It does not have to be on the streets. I and mean, this is just taking all those concepts in, into a very, very intimate setting. And I was just completely obsessed with this image. And then I, you know, I, I, I just saw everything that Larry Fink had done. And I just absolutely adored his work. Um another great Sally Mann. So Sally Mann, um, so Sally Mann is a little bit different out of the orbit of um, my influences because I could mm -hmm. go on and on and on and name, you know, Bruce Davidson and I, you know, um, Larry Towell, another one that I absolutely adore and, you know, Winogrand and yeah, I, it goes on and on and on. But while I was in school, I began to see Sally Mann's work and her immediate family work, which 
just like carve out another section in my heart yeah. was like embedded in me. It just struck a chord so deep. And, you know, I looked at all her work, you know, in the last two days and trying to, this has always been the image to me that I find a, like a little bit of a miracle. It's that little bit of chaotic beauty. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I've heard a lot of interviews with her and I've read her books and I, you know, she went through a lot when she did these, this book and um, people, she got hate mail from every, yes. people, like, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it was the nat most natural thing in the world for kids to run around naked. So it's like, yeah. whatever. But, yeah. um, you know, I remember she said, oh, they were beautiful. They were beautiful, right? Children are just beautiful and magical little unicorns. Every child. So I'm literally obsessed with children. And I always have been, even to this day. If I saw a child, and I'm not photographing children like I used to, but I mean, they just, you know, kids kill me. They just do things they say, the things they do, the way they look. I just love it. It, it just, it, and I, I've loved every child that I photographed, like in my whole career. So this photo to me, it's just everything um, that I could potentially want and love in a photograph you know this is just the extraordinary beauty of childhood yeah <laughs> all the details yeah. and the moment and that expression and i think she's holding herself there she probably has to pee yeah it's just captured in such a way that it's part fantasy and 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 reality yeah and life and just life yeah and and, know, I, and and that to me is just 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 everything we uh we wrap things up with eugene richards number five for you we do Brilliant. so eugene richards i mean okay so look here's my here's my coffee cup right Yes. It's a unicorn coffee cup. Okay. It is. My uh -huh. son did this, my youngest son, who's an artist. Um, and um, you know, I, I it's my favorite coffee cup. So, but the whole unicorn thing, it's really true. It's like Eugene Richards, if you look at his body of work, your jaw drops. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a quote by him that he says, if I can touch you, I can photograph you. Eugene is the one that gets in very close, A, B, told me verbatim in the class when I took it with him, well, Barb, he's like, no one really sees me. I kind of disappear. Huh. I'm just, I'm just, and you know, you've seen Cocaine Blue and how, you know, he's just like so close to, you know, people shooting up and there's some kind of magic to him and he's 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 extraordinarily gifted he's just a gifted artist it, yes. it, it, it was bestowed upon him to be this extraordinary artist so this photograph now i own a eugene richards photograph that i didn't choose because um you know i thought i thought long and hard of it so there were two images that i wanted to buy of his and i you know my husband said to me if and when you get a little extra money go ahead you know, buy one. So there was this like weird, like issue with an image of mine that had been sold around like up in Canada or something. And, and they didn't collect the funds for it. So I got this check for $1,600, like out of the blue. And I'm like, extra money. This is my money. So <laughs> I bought the image of, um, and down, down in the South, I think it's in Tennessee. And it's like, uh, but this was the other image that I was considering buying. At the time, it was between these two images, and um, I think I think someone said, "Well, Barb, do you want that on your living room wall?" And I was like, "Yes, it's completely fine." But you know, we ended up going with the other image. So to me, this image is again this miracle of an image. I mean, I've had three children. I've given birth three children. I know I know what that's like right after you know, the time go leading up to giving birth, the time right after giving birth. 
and there's this extraordinary euphoria. You, you just cannot believe that you gave birth to this human being. It's just beyond explanation. So you're in that euphoria, but you're also in a lot of pain. Yes. And this woman exudes both of those emotions, like right there, the joy, the euphoria, and she's, you can still see that, you know, she's hanging in there. She's getting this tender kiss from her loving partner. And right in the middle is this the baby. baby. Yeah. What? I, it's just, I cannot believe this frame and this moment. It's just, this is, a, this to me is, is, is everything. It's life at its most beautiful moment, pure, extraordinary, everything's perfect. Yeah, the, the, the image is, is unbelievable. Listening to you talk about the image gives me goosebumps. Because, because not only are you talking about the image itself, but you're bringing yourself into it as well. Um, just that's uh, that this is why I love this program. Mm, uh, right. Barbara, just uh, um, thank you yeah, so much. I, I know it was uh, or Peacock. Sorry. Uh, peacock, it was a, yeah, a ple hey. pleasure. <laughs> pleasure fun. talking it to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Fi five great images and such a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, really. Thank you so much for coming on the Crit House. Thank you. Um, and, and I want to thank everybody else for uh, coming and watching the Crit House. And if you have the opportunity, take a well, look at American okay. Bedroom you and we will link to your- this book from me. Uh, go on my website, AmericanBedroomSeries.com. If you would like this book, I can sign it for you, et cetera. I only have so many books. Otherwise it will come out in May. And we will link to that in the show notes below. Barbara Peacock. Peacock, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you all for watching The Crit House. Thank you.